Hi guys, this is James from Cad9 Design. Uh, that's my company and my YouTube channel. Uh, some friends have been bugging me to go ahead and start a YouTube channel. And uh, I get to work on a lot of cool projects, so I thought I'd go ahead and uh, start one. First series I'm going to do is going to be on Intermediate to Advanced Fusion 360. Not really going to be covering beginner stuff. There's plenty of that stuff on YouTube already. Um, so I kind of already expect people to know, you know, how to extrude and how sketches work and all that stuff, how parametric modeling works. Um, but even if you are a beginner, you might get something out of this. But that's just not really what it's aimed at. So I noticed um, when Autodesk released the derive feature, like, a, I don't know, I think two months ago, they did a quick video on it. And then I think uh, Lars Christensen mentioned it and another one, but they didn't really go in depth to it too much. Well, I had the privilege of being one of the people who got to beta test the derive feature. And I got to use it quite a bit. So I've been using it for, I think, uh, six or seven months, something like that. And uh, there's a lot of use cases they didn't really touch on that I found really, really handy in my workflow. Uh, so I thought I'd share a couple of them with you. Uh, um, last one actually saves you a lot of time if you deal with large assemblies. So if you're unfamiliar with the derive feature, it's a fairly new feature. Um, it's similar to how when you have a component in SOLIDWORKS and you alter that component, the uh, assemblies it's uh, used in, it's going to update in those assemblies as well. Um, Fusion didn't really have that. I mean, you could make a file and drop it in and it would be linked and it would update, but you couldn't really take something like that. Um, you know, you could design something in one assembly and then go use it in another uh, and maintain the link. You can only really save out a copy. So what Derive does is under Create, you select Derive, there's a couple of different ways of doing this. If you select the body, it's just going to, the create, created files only have that body in it. None of the sketches or anything like that. If you select the component level or subcomponent, if it's something more complicated, it's going to pull that whole thing with the sketches and all into the next one. Um, doesn't really matter which. It depends on what you're doing with it. Um, for this example, I'm taking this from the component level. Uh, we're going to hit cancel here and uh, pretend I went ahead and did that. So here's our result. We go, you know, we edit the, the sketch that drives this and it's going to update here. But something important to know, this is one directional only. So if this is in an assembly and you are editing it in another assembly, this will change, but the driving instance won't. Let me kind of get into the specifics here of how that works. You'll notice the sketches are here. No dimensions or anything like that though. And the profiles have all been turned into like projected geometry. And Let's see if it's gonna even if it's gonna let me drag no. Um, but if I go in and uh, look at this here, there's no edit sketch, so I can't really do anything with that sketch. So what it does basically is this feature here, this derive feature, is that whole thing packaged up and dropped in here. It's it's basically uh, uneditable. So notice when I do this, it actually knocks us back over to this file. So you've got this snapshot here and now I can fill it this. Let's hide that sketch. Let's go ahead and just hide the sketches. Now I can go ahead and uh, fill it this. Let's grab this one too. And uh, put some fillets on there. Doesn't really matter how big they are at this point. And see, this one is unchanged. So, um, the main use case for this is 
I can have a part in an assembly and I can make a derive, you know, of that and use this flange or whatever in other assemblies and have them linked, which is great because Fusion, you can do that for, for years. Um, and while I much prefer the top down kind of modeling in Fusion for large assemblies, uh, it really, really got annoying that you couldn't reuse components without breaking the links between them. So um, I was really, really happy to see this come along. Now, where is this useful besides that? Um, I found it's extremely useful rendering. If you're going to machine something, uh, you want to use this file, you know, you get your sharp corners, everything like that. You can pick that and do your chamfering or, you know, edge rounding or whatever. Um, but you have these edges to pick. If you do a lot of machining, you're going to understand why you don't want uh, models, chamfers, and all that stuff. Um, and then in this one, let's go ahead and delete the fillets. I can go ahead and model my chamfers, you know, that I don't have in the file I'm doing the machining for. Um, I'd say have this be the render model. Like renders look awful when you've got square edges. Like nature doesn't have square edges. If they are square, what I usually do is throw a tiny little chamfer or a tiny little fillet on there so that edge catches the light, makes it look way, way, way more realistic. So, but it increases the size of uh, a file, uh, which in most of the cases isn't going to matter. Um, sometimes you, when you're machining, you want these sharp corners. And then sometimes if you're in a large assembly, you also don't want all the fillets and stuff like that because the assembly gets bogged down. So you can kind of do the stripped down version and then you can kind of have the render version. Um, another advantage, uh, this is the kind of naturally moving on to the next use case is large assemblies uh, cam. I've got uh, a few assemblies where I got a couple of hundred components and doing all the machining for all those parts in the same assembly is impossible. It's just too big uh, and loads too slowly. Where I can now create, I used to actually save out a copy of the component and do my cam, uh, you know, one component or whatever per file or all the components that are like the same thickness of material or whatever in one file and do my cam in there. Problem with that is no parametric link. If I make a ch change to the design, I kind of have to redo the cam file. I mean, I can delete the old one and drop a new one in and fix all the broken references. But, uh, you know, I'd much rather have that just push through that whole um, series of files, you know, push those changes downstream. Um, here, I can say, I have my cam living in this file, do everything I need to do to render from this file. And use this in some big assembly. And this isn't going to be bogging my assembly down. OK. Now let's kind of dig into this a little bit. So these sketches aren't editable. Say we want to turn this into something where the, um, we no longer want that link for whatever reason. We no longer want that link. Like we want to maintain this version of it because like assembly A changed and assembly B didn't. So we want to keep the first version of that part in assembly B. We can right click here. We can break the link. Give you a little warning. Okay. Now, one thing to take note of is when you do that, this still doesn't have all my normal options, right? It's still just like its own little standalone unit. So if you plan on breaking that link, go ahead and just save a copy instead most of the time. It'll preserve your parametric stuff. If you're not worried about that, and there's times when you're not going to be worried about that, then just derive the body rather than the whole assembly. 
But uh, yeah, this doesn't become a normal sketch after that. Now, if I delete the feature history or the design history, now I can edit that sketch. Now, it's not parametrically linked. I can do whatever I want to that sketch. It's not going to move the holes, see? Um, but yeah, these don't turn to normal sketches if you break that way. That's kind of um, important to remember. So when we're dealing with large assemblies, um, and thank you again, Martin, for letting me use this. Um, let's just take a moment. If, if uh, you don't know this guy's channel, you don't know my channel. So I'm sure anybody who's watching my channel has probably already seen this guy. He's, uh, you know, uh, I got nine subscribers. He's got like over a million. So, but if by some weird chance you don't know this guy's channel, check out MMX or Marble Machine X or Winter Gotten. The name of the channel is Winter Gotten. If you put any of those in, this is going to come up. But this is a freaking incredible, incredible CAD model. It's absolutely beautiful. But it is also uh, incredibly huge and takes five minutes to load. And we don't do any work in this model at this top level just because it's unusable. Uh, everything gets done at this secondary level here or down in there. Well, understandably, we want to back this model up regularly just in case. And uh, to back up, you want to save out an FD3 file. Now, say we right click on this, we hit export, and our options are I just sat SMT and step, no FD3 file. Now you can back up a step file, or whatever, but we're going to lose all these nice render textures and stuff and all our sketches and all. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. The reason is, links. If a document has links, you cannot back it up as an FD3 file or F3D file. You got to get rid of all those links first. Um, you can do that by going in here, right hand clicking and selecting break link, um, which until I figured this trick is what I was doing before. Um, I spent many, many, many hours. But then I discovered if I create a derive of that file and then in the, let's go back to our flange here, in the derive file, I break link like I did there. So this becomes just a component and a base feature. All these subassembly links are broken automatically. Now, some of you guys aren't ever going to have this issue, but some of you have right click several hundred times on fasteners and stuff like that breaking links uh, and it can get pretty tedious you know because you download something from mcmaster car or whatever and you got it in there 50 times and they're all linked and it's all well and good until things start slowing down or you want to move it to a different project and you can't have it all linked you need a standalone file or something so as of yet um Fusion does not have like a mass break link feature or like a break all links feature. Um, hint, hint, guys. Uh, some of us would really like to see that. But in the meantime, you can use derive. Just create a derive and then break the link. Um, also, here is a very, very good example of where we don't want our cam in the upper level assembly. Imagine all this machining in this assembly. And a lot of it actually is in this particular version of the file. We have a, a version of this assembly with all the links broken um, that we're working in now, but this is a little bit of an older version of it. Um, you know, when you watch the thing load, you see it loading cam files for a good solid minute down here. When you see the little progress bar. So it's really, really handy for that. Uh, mass link breaking. Uh, what well, you know we're doing with this now all the cam is like we'll create create a derive of that component and the machining happens in that derived file hopefully that's going to help things out so to sum up the derived feature handy for having uh, uh, part multiple files uh, multiple projects still maintain that parametric link really really handy for uh, having a couple variants like say you want quarter 20 and one version of this and a half 13 holes in another version of this thing. Um, handy for stuff like that. 
uh, super handy for keeping your assembly files manageable with cam i think that's my single single biggest use case for this um, and super handy for mass link breaking which you don't do too often but when you do it it's something you never want to do again <laughs> All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you, you know, subscribe to the video if you get something out of it. Um, not sure what the next one's going to be. Uh, I think I'm going to be doing one on retopology in Fusion 360, getting usable um, engineering files out of STLs that you might get from Thingiverse or something like that. So, yep, please subscribe or don't, and see you next time.